paintings of modern artists, uh, Polish artists, such as our guests today, and uh, you use them during the class, or we can use uh, something that was painted or produced a few um, centuries before, and we can make uh, comparisons. Um, I think that's why that, that's a really good idea. And also, it's very important for um, young people who, um, are, who are born or brought up in the UK or abroad in general, they may not always have um, opportunity uh, to live in Poland. Uh, but that would be for them an excellent way of um, getting in touch with the history and um, of, of, the, of, the, of the parents, of their descendants. Thank you so much. And I have a question uh, to Anya. Anya, uh, can the picture convey more than words? What do you think about this? Uh, yes, I agree with this statement. Um, Words can be forgotten by people, but images and portraits of people will always somehow remain in our memory, uh, our brain. Uh, so the picture is more sensitive, um, um, engage our uh, sights, ears, everything. Thank you so much for your answer. And the same question to you, Basha. Exactly the same. Can that picture cover more than the walls? What do you think? You are the great artist. Uh, what do you think about this? About what? Uh, about this question. Can a picture convey more than words? Czy um, obrazy przekazują coś więcej niż słowa? No, obrazy to zależy, zależy z jakiej epoki. Obrazy w dzisiejszych czasach nie przekazują żadnej treści. To jest absolut rubbish i dużo lepiej jest pójść do prądu oraz zobaczyć kawałek, nawet kawałek posadzki. Jest, jest piękniejszy, aniżeli to, to, to co w galerii. Okay. Uh... Okay. I'm very surprised because I didn't expect something like this. Uh, but I really respect uh, your opinion. Uh, but let me know if you say something like that. Why you paint the people? Why you try to make a portrait? Why? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can tell you why. I was studying in Academy of Art in Gdansk six years of abstract. So I had a very good diploma, I created beautiful big abstracts with the Biennale here and there, and then I had an exhibition in Rome and with my beautiful big abstract and one self-portrait with abstract, and everybody came to this self-portrait and said, if you can paint this, why do you do those? So I couldn't understand what, what, the, what it meant. And then, uh, so I then had commissions and I painted, uh, of course, uh, portraits, and then, to, if you paint portraits and when you are very young, you can come up to anybody and say, I, 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 I like your face, can I paint your portrait? And everybody says yes. And I remember in Rome, I asked Alberto Moravia. Alberto Moravia, nobody knows him in England, but in the time when I was, we were growing up, Alberto Moravia was a great hero of literature and everybody knew him. So I said, I would love to paint you. He said, of course, of course. So I went to his house, I was painting him, and he was talking the whole time. So I had this experience listening, and I said, in the end, I got angry. I said, look, if you, if you continue talking, I can't paint. And he said, listen, I'm a writer. I, ha I need my pleasure. You are a painter. You have your pleasure. I need my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. So you see, when you are a portrait painter, you can come up, it's a little bit like being a journalist. You can, I like to interview you. You can't say no if you are young and pretty girl. So everybody says yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before you give a microphone to Dan, I have a question, uh, another question to you and to Anya and Dan and Beata, the same question. It's a tricky question. Do you think that the portrait painting is a promotion of Poland? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you think? Yes, yes, because everybody says, oh, she is Polish. This is Basia Hamilton, she is Polish, she, she painted Queen Mother. That's all the end of discussion. <laughs> of course. No, no, it, it, 
whatever we do is like like the, 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 the mathematicians, they are Polish, but they, they, they are still not that well known in Poland, in, in England, because we, we, we brought up in Poland, we did not have this idea of promotion. We, we are not used to promotion, which was very undignified to promote something. Business, the business didn't exist, nobody had any money, so we didn't, we didn't, we don't know, we are not used to promote anything. Thank you. Anya, it's the same question to you, and next Dan. Oh, maybe Dan. What do you think? Now, I, I'd like you to repeat that question once more. Yes, because please. Because some of the words I didn't quite hear okay. in the beginning. Do you think that the portrait painting is a promotion of Poland? Not all portraits painted are motion Poland. Mm -hmm. There are portraits of some very nasty people who get associated with Poland. I won't name any names. Uh, well, like who? Okay, well, please I, let us I, know because it's quite an interesting statement. Well, I don't have a name to name. I'm drawing on my experience of my work with the Polish Beauty Issues Group, and we would defend. Poland in the press, in the media, in books, etc., and even in films, by those who would say, "Ah, I'm Polish," and they do something really nasty. Oh yes, that's so true. So that's the alternate side of the mm -hmm. coin. There are some negative things that do happen because I'm Polish. Um, I could talk about someone named Tokarczuk. You don't know that name? Yes, we know. Yes, we know. Uh, Nobel Prize winner. Polish by birth, but I hope we're doing in trouble for this, but I would say not Polish by nationality. She's Ukrainian. I thought she, well, she was in, she has Polish citizenship. Okay, I think her, her roots may be different, but she's recognized as a Polish Nobel Prize winner. Thank you. But the trouble is, mm -hmm. and her portrait here, her, not her, her portrait probably, and also her um, picture has been all over the place for years now. And she says some very negative things about Poland, some of which may be true, but she gives a certain slant to everything she does that makes it negative. As I'm getting nodding heads here, yes, we know this. And it makes me really upset. So I won't say angry, I'll say upset. So that's a negative image that we'd mm -hmm. like to counteract. Mm -hmm. But the thing that Bastia has been doing for decades now, that's amazing. But I don't think everyone realizes that she's Polish. We do. No, what, no. We know that you are okay. Polish, Basia. We haven't no. any doubts about no, that. We, we in the Polish community know, but not necessarily everyone. Everyone will realize that Kaczmowski is a Polish name. No, most people know. Of course, yes, I agree with Basia. And I'm I have a question. I'm sure you're right. Okay. Uh, thank no. you. One, I one more comment to make. Though. Yes, please. In this age of, think back to um, 40, 50 years before we had iPhones or smartphones, or we had mini cameras or things like that. The images you saw were those of professional photographers or professional artists or something on television. Very few images. And now, as you know, we are flooded with images. Absolutely inundated with images of all sorts of things we don't want to see, but last thing we do want to see. So I'm saying the answer then is we must promote positive Polish images Portraits are a key way to do it, but then these days there are many times more photographs taken and spread around than portraits. Portraits are something very, very special. They're created. It's a camera, click, you've got a photo. So it's amongst all those images we need to promote the, the fact that the Polish ones that we want to do are actually useful and good for society and the world. And we have enemies. Poles of enemies, we still do them anyway, I won't even name any of those, but across in the Polish media issues group, I come across them every day. And we've got to combat those negative images they're putting out and make sure that we literally promote poles that are a positive image for our country, for, the, for our country of Poland, and even poles abroad, whether it's USA, where I've lived for many years, or UK here, or France, even Germany, etc. So it, there's a lot of work yet to be done. You can have a, you can't, we can have a very positive effect, but there's an awful lot of work put in to get that effect. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your opinion. Thank you. It's a very important voice.
And Beata, what is the first pictures you remember from your life? Uh, think about this, it's a very tricky question. And why? And we will back Julie for a second to Anya about do you think that portrait painting is a promotion of Poland? Julie for a second. But Beata, you are first. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, make a comment to what uh, Anya said. Mm -hmm. No, Monica. Monica. Monica and Dan, uh, because I think when we um, use uh, pictures, paintings to teach history, um, they could be on various levels. Okay, if you want to show uh, a kid what uh, Mieszko I looked like, there's nothing you know, to it. Yeah, he is the prince and Chrobry and that. But if you have um, I always think that uh, the main um, aim of school is now, should be, teaching critical thinking. So, for example, if we have Mateiko and we have a um, uh, coronation of uh, Bolesław Chrobry, right? And uh, on that painting, for those who don't know, um, uh, Chrobry is kneeling down, uh, Autumn the third. Um, Holy Roman Emperor is standing on the left, and uh, behind there is uh, somebody holding a sword. And, um, and now uh, we present this to, to a class uh, of A level students, let's say, right? And uh, so, do we actually teach them that that was the coronation and that's it? Or can we just introduce the question why? Okay? So I think that's the various levels of, of teaching history with, with the pictures, yes? And coming back to um, Dan and uh, the using uh, portraits for uh, the, neg uh, the negative um, sort of messages. Yes, uh, they're negative, let's say, for you and for, for uh, but they're ideolo ideologically charged. So I think that we have to be very careful and the critical thinking is coming in because we have to ask, we have to teach the children or young people asking questions. Why are they promoting this person? What do we know about her? Does she really um, represent what we want to teach to you to know? Because if we say, well, we don't like her because she was anti Polish or something, that's something. But, you know, why was she like that? You know, what happened? Who, who actually commissioned somebody to paint this? What do we get in, in exchange for that? What kind of student do we want to this person be when he leaves my classroom? Does he want to? And, and I, when I was coming to the school, and I always say to the teachers when the, when the training was going on, I said, ask the, the uh, teach the child one question. Why? Dlaczego? Why, why Krobre is kneeling down? Why is he holding Włócznia Maurycego? Why is he doing this? And only through questioning, we can, we can get a discussion. They, we can, they can start probing, yes? Just presenting the picture does not solve the problem, I think, of you know, um, acquainting kids with the paintings. And uh, your question, my first painting, um, mm -hmm. I can't remember. <laughs> no, I just don't know. Okay, thank you so much. No, I do, I do not. Sorry. Yes, you know? Yes, it was Christmas time and my brother and I thought um, for, of a present for my mother. And we had our savings and we were deliberating what to get her. And I remember it was a very rainy day, and we put our coats on and we went to the bookshop. And there was Pochet Królów Polski. I was very young then, you know, and we thought that's the right thing to buy for my, because we like the pictures, you know, and so we bought the, the, this book and that was the, our sort of uh, pastime because there, were no, there was no TV or anything like that. Yes, that's right. Yes, as a child. Yes, as a child. Images. Images. So, thank you so much, Beata and Anya. Uh, bef uh, what is the first picture you remember from your life? And the second question, do you think that the portrait painting is a promotion of Poland? So maybe the second question. Okay. Second so, question is for you. Of course, I think it's true that it's kind of promotion, but we can uh, say about a good portrait painting. Good. It's the 
very uh, important word. Uh, so, because it's promotion, priceless promotion of Polish achievements, skills, uh, sensitivity, um, everything what is very um, memorable for, for us. And um, uh, I think that um, another uh, nationality could uh, know about uh, Polish um, um, humanist uh, oil painters or um, artists, especially artists, but good artists, I think. Thank you so much, Anya. Anya is from Poland and she is absolutely amazing writer. Uh, she is author of uh, a book uh, which was published last year, uh, 2022. She's a poet uh, as well and she's a journalist. And I know how tough it is uh, to Anya to speak in English, but she's absolutely brilliant in Polish. So if you will have a if we will have a time, this uh, next question for Anya, uh, I would like to ask in Polish, but not yet, not yet, Anya. So I believe that you understand me, okay? But thank you. I think <laughs> I know. So, <laughs> Monika, the same question to you. Uh, what is the first picture you remember from your life? I have no idea, so I probably have to. Um, tell you about the painting that I um, I like a lot, and it's the one by Matejko, and it's called Conversation with the God, obviously portraying um, um, Copernicus. Mm, thank you. This is my favorite as well. I uh, never ever forget the event which was organized by uh, Polish Culture Institute in the National Gallery and I had and we had opportunity to see this beautiful masterpiece. Thank you again to Polish Culture Institute because it was a big achievement and we had a big opportunity to see these things. And Basia, the same question to you. Um, what is the first picture you remember from your life? Do you remember something? The first pictures which do you remember? I remember in our library at home there was a book by Grodger. Mm -hmm. And I remember such gloomy, dark, black and white pictures. Mm -hmm. And I think that is my first uh, sort of emotional feel about, about uh, paintings. Otherwise I don't remember any other. But Grodger, I always recognize Grodger. It was very patriotic and, mm -hmm. and, and gloomy, you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Basia is very important for all of us, but especially for me, because uh, for me, she's like a mecenas. You know why? Because uh, when I look at the Basia, at her uh, achievement and what she's doing for a young generation, I always remember about the Karol, Karol Lanskowoński and his absolutely amazing uh, support for Jacek Malczewski. As I said yesterday, Karol Lanskowski helped him a lot, and uh, next Karolina Lanskowska promoted uh, the Jacek Malczewski masterpiece. So this is the same story, so Basia, thank you that you are here and you are conduct, you know, the Portrait Foundation. You are in our hearts, you are precious. And the last question, for everyone is the same. Is it worth organizing such events as this? What do you think? We have to organize the events like this or not? Is um, important? Maybe not? What do you think? The first uh, data. Uh, yes, I think it's very important to organize events like that and to uh, um, uh, inform the British public about our uh, cultural heritage um, and um, show how uh, the two countries um, cooperated and developed uh, the relationship first with trade, then artistic and uh, literary. And um, it's, it's quite fascinating when we look at, the, at um, literature, for example, we see how um, uh, the writers, uh, poets, were supporting Polish uh, fight for independence, uh, how the parliamentarians uh, were lobbying on behalf of the Poles uh, in fights for independence. 
and uh, I think we need to make uh, people poles aware of that, of the depth and width of uh, uh, cooperation uh, with our countries, because understanding uh, each other, one another, is, is so important, and discussions, so um, I think the events like that. Thank you so much, and the same question to you then. Well, um, what you've said makes me think of the uh, war going on in Ukraine at the moment. I haven't seen a more positive uh, world view of Poland for a long, long time, except when the Poles open their homes and their hearts and their everything else to these Ukrainian refugees flooding over the border. That was a very positive moment, and I think that has been used very well within the UK and within the world, I guess, to promote a very positive image of Poland and especially of Poles, the character of Poles, how generous they are, even to a fault in some cases. And yet now, as that war grinds on, the pressures are building in terms of how much can Poland take, basically, and how much can the rest of the world take in helping Ukraine survive against Russia. So it's even more important now, <laughs> these days, to have a positive, I'll say, attitude towards Poland. And one of the ways that that is presented is via images. Not just images, but a combination. It needs to be an integrated approach. Images, yes, very important. But the attitude, the character, the history of Poland and Poles can be presented more effectively now because we have the world's attention far more than we used to. So that's a jolly good thing. And I'm hoping that you know, we can make this very important today, today more than five years ago. Thank you so much. I'm really glad that you say that because in our, uh, because we have uh, someone special here. She's a very modest person. Her name is Gosia Jones. Gosia is there in the last row and she, did absolutely incredible job. Uh, Kosia organized. Uh, oh, Kosia, may I? Uh, okay, please join to us. She supported uh, Ukrainian people from the beginning of the uh, war, and she organized a lot of transport to Ukraine. I met uh, Gosia one year ago, and we organized a lot of um, help, humanitarian help to Ukrainian people. A soldiers, and she received a special award. Maybe Gosia mentioned about this. Uh, how many we sent to Ukraine? Please let us know. Loads, Asha, you know, loads. It's not even about the lorries which we send on a regular basis. It's about raising funds and support Ukrainian army. We are trying to get cars, medical equipment for uh, Ukrainian soldiers. We work on a massive scale. There is loads of things which I don't really want to talk in public, but I feel I must do it. I feel we Polish people, we know what does it mean under, to be under Russian occupation. And I'm saying big no to that. And if I have possibilities, if I have amazing people who I work with, yes. <laughs> And if we can do something together to make this war a little bit easier, then why not to do it? I'm proud, I'm Polish, my husband is English, this is my daughter, and they know they support means a lot to me, because without them I wouldn't be able to do this what I do. In December 2022, I was uh, nominated by uh, the mayor of Wolfram Forest as a volunteer of the year. So I was very proud of myself. Yes, I was the only one of the Polish person. She's the only one Polish person. Yes, who actually won. And yes, I'm very proud of Poland. I'm very proud of my family. And I hope that together we can achieve more. Thank you so much, Gosia. Gosia is a modest person and her husband is here. Thank you so much that you understand us. That, thank you for your patience. Thank you, little star, that you support us. I remember we spent sometimes all, sometimes all night to organize 
I would think, I remember when I speak with you and you said, oh, I'm fed up because, you know, it's mess everywhere. Uh, but we save life, we send um, medicines, we send a lot of other goods. And nobody knows about that, but I know Gosha and I would like to give you a big hug. Yes, thank you so much, Brava. <laughs> And now we're back to you, Pasha. The same question, is it worth organizing such events as this? Czy warto organizować takie spotkania jak to właśnie? No naturalnie, no to jest naprawdę, byłaś genialna, że to spotkanie było zorganizowane chyba w ciągu tygodnia. Zaproszenie do klu członków klubu zostało wysłane w piątek. Także dwa dni przed przed tym wydarzeniem. Także to było zupełnie nadzwyczajne, że udało się to zorganizować i że taka masa ludzi przyszła. Także Polacy właściwie chętnie się spotykają i ten klub jest właściwie założony do tego, żeby tutaj robić spotkania Polaków i żeby Polacy też mogli wymieniać między sobą idee, bo są bardzo mądrzy i, i po prostu powinni się bardziej jednoczyć. I ja, ma, ja żyję w takim uczuciu spokoju, że Polska będzie, będzie zawsze wspaniała, bo Polacy są, nic się nam nic złego nie stanie, bo przeżyliśmy y, i komunę, i sto lat niewoli, i, i, i wojnę. I Polacy są bardzo, bardzo zdolni. Także ja im, im więcej znam Polaków tu na, na zachodzie, tym bardziej je, je, wiem, wie, widzę, jak są, jak są po prostu, jak sobie potrafią poradzić z każdym problemem. Na przykład kiedyś, jak były telefony na żetony, to Polacy w Szwecji zrobili sobie dziurkę w żetonie i spuszczali na żyłce z góry na dół. Także Polacy mają zawsze koncepcję wspaniałą. A, a też powiedział mi Maciek Kielanowski, że Polacy zrobili sobie foremkę z, z, z żetonów i wpuszczali te żetony z lodu. Polak pod hafi. Dziękuję Basiu. No naprawdę, to są takie genialne pomysły, że nikomu innemu, nikomu innemu by nie przyszło do głowy. Thank you so much. Aniu, the same question to you. It's up to you which language you use. A few words in English, of course. It's a good idea. It's uh, a good school of promotion, Polish culture, uh, artists and things like that. And um, it's, we need a right place uh, for that kind of um, activity. Uh, it's, it would say a word, attention. Attention is priceless, I think, so we have a good time um, during this situation in the history with Ukraine and things like that. So we would try to do everything to show our good sides. Thank you so much. And the same question to you, Monica. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, of course, um, it's a very good idea to organize those events. And as Beata said and Barbara mentioned that as well, it's a great opportunity for us, Poles, uh, to, to meet together, but also um, for us to be, um, to meet other nations and, you know, show our hosts who we really are, what we represent, what we can offer. And uh, I think uh, another similar event would be very welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, and we finish our discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Beata. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Basia, Anya and Monika. I know that it was a um, long time, but I will tell And now, it is the last part of our event, the last part, but not, um, you know, maybe we wait, because uh, to, uh, Kuba, I'm sorry for a second, could you be so kind to take this chair out? But Kuba, not you, Basia, you are our star. <laughs> As you see, Basia is not only the star, she's all, uh, also the very modest person. Thank you, Basia. Oh, you uh, can do anything, no? Basia said that this event was organized uh, because we are cooperate each other. Thank you for this words. Basia is very modest, but when I contact with her and said, oh Basia, it would be nice to organize event for the Polish artists, Tadeusz Kurek and Rosalia Nowak, uh, 
I didn't expect the answer straight away. But she said, of course, we have to support each other. We are artists. So I look, I, I was flabbergasted because it was amazing. This is a character for Basia. Basia, thank you so much for that. You are an amazing person.